What if I told you that you had access to every MLS database in the state of Florida, at least any re every realtor MLS database? And if you think about it, uh, that's pretty much everything uh, because uh, the MLS, uh, among many peculiarities, has one thing that has been a constant since the inception of the MLS, I believe it was, don't laugh at me because this is true, the inception of the MLS, I believe it was in the late 19th century, yeah? Now, when we think of the MLS, we think of a computer. So, Justin, you're crazy. There were no computers in the 19th century. Well, two things. One, yes, there were. There were not electronic computers. And two, that really, it, if you think back, like uh, the late 90s, the MLS was in books. Remember that? Well, when the MLS started, it started like that. And uh, the one thing that makes the MLS... Um, different is that there is a blanket offer of compensation. Meaning if I am going to place a listing on the MLS, I am offering the same compensation to everybody that participates in the MLS. You're a transaction broker, I'm gonna pay you 3% if you bring me a buyer. Uh, you're a single agent, I'm gonna pay you 2% if, uh, if you bring me a buyer, and so on and so forth. That is a blanket offer of compensation. So, if you want to search for properties outside of your area, let's say that you're uh, in, the, in Palm Beach Gardens, or you are in Broward, or you are in Boynton Beach, and you want to search for property in the three county area, you're good to go. You're in very good shape because we have one of the largest MLS database in the planet. I'm not kidding you. We have one of the largest MLS databases in the planet. But what happens if, and this is a very common occurrence, here in, in Florida. What happens if you get a foreign buyer that tells you, hey, you know what? I got a couple of million bucks and I would like to invest, but anywhere in Florida works for me. Yes? Well, are you going to narrow your searches only to the three counties or you would like to see what's available in Tampa, Orlando, Tallahassee, Jacksonville, the Keys, and so on and so forth? Well, you have access to this. This is what MLS Advantage is. An MLS Advantage is such an intuitive, easy to use system that I am pretty confident that in 26 minutes when we end this webinar, you are going to be a solid MLS Advantage user, if not well on your way to become an expert, okay? So step number one is how do you get into MLS Advantage? Well, there are a couple of ways. If your association has a gateway, like the Miami Association, like the Palm Beach Association, then you just log in into your gateway and look for the icon. It just says MLS Advantage, just like that. Otherwise, if you just want to go straight to it without stopping by your association's website, you can go to floridarealtors.org. floridarealtors.org. You log in. If you don't have your login, don't worry. Just tell them, hey, I forgot my, uh, uh, my user ID and password, and it's extremely easy to retrieve it, and usually it's going to take you about one or two minutes only. Once you log in into Florida Realtors, look for MLS Advantage. It's right there. Yeah? Okay. So click on MLS Advantage. If you have never seen this system again, I want you to feast your eyes because you are using matrix or you are using flex. You are using systems that are very good, very effective, but they're not very friendly on the eyes, are they? They're really not. Okay, look at this. I'm gonna click on MLS Advantage. And there you go, a beautiful interface. And again, if you have never seen this system before, I want you to look at the screen as if you were looking at a book, meaning you are going to start on your upper left-hand side corner, and from there you're going to go across the page just like a book, right? So first, you're going to have your name, your account, and log out. Then the main functions, search, reports, customers, my listings, CMA, help, training, and feedback. Um, by the way, little comment, the help and the training sections are excellent, absolutely outstanding. They have a 40-minute uh, recorded class on MLS Advantage that covers every possible feature you can imagine. And the help section is fantastic. And you also have live chat and you have the tech hotline that you can call and somebody can help you live. 
okay? Next below, just like reading a book, you have four tabs, four tabs, and you're going to be using uh, two tabs most of the time, 80% of the time, and a third tab uh, often. So field search, just like going into your MLS, Plex or Matrix, just go into your MLS and clicking on search, same thing. Map search, just like in your MLS, you have a map search, safe search, and uh, hot search. So we are going to do a natural search. This is live. This is not a PowerPoint. This is happening live right now on my screen. So let's say that we have that imaginary investor, foreign citizen, and he's got, uh, let's imagine that he's got $500,000 and he would like to have, he would like to buy a uh, um, single family home in Florida. He's got um, two kids, so he wants three bedrooms, right? All right. So I'm going to scroll down very slowly. And again, I hope a lot of you, this is the first time that you see the system because you're going to notice how friendly this is. If I wasn't here explaining to you how to use the system, you will be able to figure this out. You would absolutely be able to figure this out on your own in a couple of minutes just by looking at the screen. So, well, I know that he wants something in the state of Florida. He likes the parks because of the kids. So we are going to pick Orlando. So on the city field, I don't know what the county is for Orlando. On the city, let's see if I can find it. So I'm gonna click on it. And I have a list that I really don't want to scroll all the way to the O. That's gonna take me like half an hour. So let me see if I can find it. O, R, L, well, check that out. Okay, so I'm gonna click on Orlando. And right now, even if it's the first time that I'm looking at the system, I can tell that I can add more cities. Yeah, just now. The box expanded and Orlando became its own little rectangle with an X. And that tells me hey, I can keep on adding cities if I wanted to. Now, if I am adding Orlando, do I need the zip code? No, you don't. So you don't need to complicate things. Now, the property type, single family home is already selected by default, but if it was different, all I need to do is to eliminate it and then add one. And yes, you can search for single family homes, condos and townhomes, mobile homes, vacant land, commercial, multifamily and rental. Yep, nothing is missing. Status, I know that some of you are thinking, well, Justin, but what if I actually want to search for uh, pending sales? or close sales, no problem whatsoever. You click on where it says property status, that's all the statuses. Pending, sold, withdrawn, expired, and terminated. If it was a business, you have the business type too, which is pretty cool, isn't it? And now we're gonna to go to the price, the, bath the bathrooms, the bathrooms, and so on. So like I say, uh, uh, my, uh, my uh, um, foreign buyer who wants to buy something somewhere in the state of Florida, it's got 500,000 bucks to spend, must be nice. And um, he wants a minimum of three bedrooms. Of course, if I find a five bedroom home, probably he'll take it for the money. So I'm gonna put minimum three bedrooms, but I'm not going to set a maximum, just in the crazy chance that I find a single family home, five bedrooms for uh, the money. And bathrooms, well, three bathrooms. And, um, you can add the square footage and whatnot. Let me show you something that is very important. If you scroll to the bottom of this screen, I want you to write this down in your notepad. If you need a field that is not available on this search, go all the way to the bottom and look for included, excluded, and possible features, yeah? So I am going to click on excluded features and um, you have water features, location, condo, recreation, lot size, land use, construction, energy. So if I wanted to exclude something, for example, in community, I don't want a place with a community uh, a clubhouse, for example, or um, I don't want a gated community. 
Yeah, remember I am on excluded, excluded. I don't want a gated community, I just added gated community, right? So I am telling the system, all this search, give me all the results that match, including all properties that do not have, the not a gated community, okay? That's it, I just added an excluded gated community and included features. Let's say for included features, I want something that has at the very least a lake view, yeah? All right, so now I'm looking for a single family home in Orlando for a mil half a million bucks or less uh, with uh, uh, three bedrooms and three bathrooms minimum. That's pretty original search. I'm gonna click on search and let's see what happens. <laughs> no listings found, I broke something. So let's go back to the search. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't being too realistic, right? Half a million bucks for that. So, uh, Let's change the price. Let's do 850. Mm -mm -mm, no listings found. So let's go back to my search. I'm gonna modify the search until I get something. So uh, let's eliminate the uh, no gated community thing. Search. Hmm, this is interesting. This is the good thing about doing live things. If you have a little problem, it's going to pop up and then you need to resolve it. So let me see what did I do wrong in here on my search. I have a minimum and a maximum of 500,000. I'm gonna change that to um, A50. Uh, it's gotta be in the city of Orlando, single family home, status active, minimum three bedrooms, minimum three bathrooms. Looks pretty good to me, but let's eliminate the lake view. See what happens now. Now I got 780 properties. So something was going on with the lake view field. So again, this is a live search. When you do your own searches, you may find little quirks like this. Play with the search, massage the search until you find what you need, and then you can refine the search, yeah? All right. So I have 780 properties. I'm gonna go back to my search and put a minimum price. So I don't get a lot of stuff that I don't need. I'm gonna put a minimum price of, uh, I don't know, it's uh, to 700,000. There you go, 87 properties is a reasonable uh, um, a pool of, uh, of results. So as you can see, instead of the uh, dry, boring spread like screen that you get on flex or matrix you get a very nice very friendly list of each one of the listings and let's stop here for a little uh, uh, for a couple of minutes if you hover with your mouse on the images you can click on the images and start seeing the images for each one of the listings individually If you click on the actual highlighted address for the listing, you can see a detailed report, a detailed report of that particular listing. And if you want to go back either to the search because you want to refine the search, or if you want to go back to the results, the buttons are right here, right there, super visible. So back to results. If you want to know what the property goes for, Price is right there, very big. You don't have to fish for it, see what it is, like in Matrix or Flex, which is super tiny. And this is important, I want you to write it down. If you like this particular property for your customer, I want you to click on Add to Report. So we are going to add a few to the report, just randomly. I'm not even looking at these guys, just randomly. All right, just added a whole bunch of them to my report. And uh, the report queue up on top to the right, the report queue is going to have a hint to how many properties you have on your report, yes? So <laughs> let's imagine that I am ready to send this to my buyer. I'm gonna click on the report queue. It shows me again the properties that I added. And then at the top and at the bottom, I have create report. 
bottom and top. So create a report. Now, just imagine that you could have this on Flex or Matrix. We would all be so happy. Look at this. You have two main tabs, very clearly visible, right there. You don't need to remember where they are because they're right there in front of you. One, it says customer report, which is meant for customers. And the other one, licensee report. If you need to share this with one of your colleagues, if you need to share this with someone who is working with you and they need to uh, have access to fields that your customers have no business looking at. For example, compensation or broker remarks. All right. So we are going to take a quick look at this report. Each one of the reports has a very friendly, very self-explanatory name. You don't need to figure out any codes, any abbreviations. Customer summary, customer detail report plus photos, detail report plus photos and map, customer detail report plus large photos and map, customer detail report and so on and so forth. And if I needed to send this to a colleague of mine, and on the licensee report, the options are just as clear. Licensee summary report, consolidated summary report, licensee detail report, <coughs> photos, licensee detail report, photos, and map. Yeah? So, I am going to view or print. View or print will allow me to show you this on the screen. Um, I need to write this down in your notepad so you remember. These reports are going to be generated as a PDF document. Yes? Adobe Reader, PDF document. This means the reports are not live. The reports have no live links that somebody can click on, right? Um, that is something that we do have in Flex and in Matrix. Your reports are live, yes? In this case, in MLS Advantage, your reports are a fixed PDF document that is going to be sent to your clients. Remember this, this is very important. Right, so I am going to pick a customer detail report, a large photos, and map. I'm just gonna go nuts with this. So, <coughs> print report. Is generating the report. Usually it takes about 10 to 30 seconds to generate a report. It doesn't matter how big the report is. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention while this generates, you have a maximum of 25 properties that you can add to a report. A maximum of 25. In general, that is pretty reasonable. But let's say that you are dealing with an investor or someone who's got a very wide search, then you're going to have to create more than one report. So let's look at this report, see what it looks like. My browser is telling me that it's blocking a pop-up, so I am going to allow all pop-ups. There you go. View and print report. So look at this. For one second, imagine that your reports on your MLS, whether it's Flex or Matrix or some other MLS, will be as attractive, as beautifully crafted as this report. Look at this thing. Beautiful header, very ugly picture, but it's my picture. What am I going to do about that? Your information is going to be up there. And then every section, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger to make it easier on the eyes. There you go. Every section is clearly divided. This is very friendly in order for your customers to organize the information that you're sending to them. So basic information up on top with a snippet of the main picture. Property description, features separated by a gray line and every section has a green header, room information, property information. Oh, we ran out of space. This is just one page, right? Okay, let's keep going. Oh, look at that. There is a second page with all the pictures. And there is a third page with the map for this one particular result. And now we move on to the next listing, and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to show you something really cool. Um, sorry, my, there you go. Zoom is playing with me. There you go. Perfect. All right, so now I'm going to show you what the licensee report looks like. 
and uh, it's got a detail that I love. I completely love this detail. And remember, you can use the system for any property on any MLS. So if you want to do searches on your local MLS, just you can go to MLS Advantage and pull the same results that you pull on your local MLS, and you can create um, reports for your local MLS on MLS Advantage. I actually do that. Uh, I have a magazine rack uh, outside my office, and I create a report of the, my office inventory, and uh, I, uh, I insert that report into magazines. Uh, and I do this with MLS Advantage because the reports are so attractive. So we should wait probably another five, 10 seconds for the report, the licensee report to be done. And I'm gonna show you the really cool detail for this. The licensee report includes the broker's name and the broker's contact information. If the broker has listed a phone number, the broker phone number would be there. In our MLS, in order in both in Flex and, and, uh, and Matrix, if you want to see the broker's information, well, you have to click on the office and then look at the office information. So this is really cool. You don't have to create the report um, for this. You can see that directly in the listing. The licensee information is right there on the listing. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? And that's this. Perfect. Now we are going to go back to the search. Some of you probably are thinking, okay, Justin, but do I have to run a search every single time? I really would like to do an automated search, just like I do on Flex, just like I do on Matrix. No problem whatsoever. I can go back to my search. There you go, I am back on my search. And then if I click on more, I could just give the search a name. So I'm gonna call this Orlando Single Family Home. I don't even remember what price point I was looking at. I think uh, um, less than 800 or something of that sort. You just give it whatever name you want. And you can save the search. And once a search is saved and it has its own name, to create an automatic notification is super easy. You're just gonna go to search, find your saved search, and then set up auto email. You see this, set up auto email. I'm gonna do it again. You go to search, find your saved searches, and pick your saved search and click on set up auto email. Setting up the auto email is just as simple as setting up an auto email on Flex or on Matrix. You're going to select your customer or you are going to add a new customer. And adding the customer is first name, last name, email address. That's pretty much all you need. You can add more information, but what you need is just first name, last name, email address. You're gonna pick the type of report that you are going to send to your customer. The default is the customer summary report. You can change that, see? You have a drop down, and you can pick whatever report you like. The email frequency, you have three choices, daily, weekly, monthly. And expiration for your auto email. You want, to, you want this to run for one month, two, three, all the way up to six. Also, there is an interesting check mark for including price changes, yes? So like any auto uh, notification, this will send all the new listings, but if you want to include the price changes, which in Matrix and Flex are included by default, in this case, you have to put a check mark. Say, okay, I want to include any price changes, yes? You can change the subject line. You can change the message. You should include your email signature. Um, if you want to get a copy of every single email, put a check mark which says send me a copy. And then you click on save and it's done. That's it, you're good to go. In a way, this is a little bit quicker and faster to set up than auto notifications and flex on matrix, uh, maybe by five seconds, but uh, that helps a lot. So we are reaching the end of our half an hour. And if you think about it, this is what you know this is what you have learned today. This is what you already know how to do. You know how to get to MLS Advantage. You go either to your association's gateway or to the Florida Realtors website, 
You log in and click on MLS Advantage. You know how to do searches. You know how to do any type of searches. You know how to add fields to your search. You know how to see your results. You know how to create reports. You know how to sort through those reports. And you know how to create uh, auto notifications for your customers. Like I promised at the beginning, you are well on your way to become an expert using MLS Advantage. If I can suggest something, I would like you to, if you have a few minutes after this presentation, I would like you to log in into MLS Advantage and do a search for an area that you are very familiar with. You get curious and you wanna see what's available on the Keys, on Tallahassee, Jacksonville, go nuts, but first do a search for an area that you are super familiar with because that expertise is going to show you what that information looks like on the system, yeah? So if you have a few minutes, just invest 10, 15 minutes, go to MLS Advantage, do a search in an area that you're familiar with. Now I am going to look at the questions that we have and let me see. What is the difference between public and private button? Is this for Zoom? I'm, Trish, you wanna unmute? I'm gonna unmute you all. Wait a minute, yeah, I, I asked that question. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> Yeah, I asked that question when you were doing the search and you answered it as you went along. So oh, okay. it was a premature question. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That's good. And then how can I how can the client see all the pictures? Oh, that's not a problem. When you are picking up the report, if you pick up the report that says large pictures, your report is going to include a full page with all the pictures. But that is the maximum number of pictures that you're going to find on one report one page of pictures. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions out there? I know. Justin, can you zoom in and zoom out on the map? Oh yes, you can. And you can, on the map, you can do uh, polygon searches, square searches, radio searches. The map is really cool. Uh, Usually, oh, this class takes about an hour and a half when I do it live, and I cover the map in detail because the map is very, very powerful. If we still have 31 people in the class, if you guys want me to, I can go back and play with the map a little bit, just as a bonus for you being patient and staying longer. You want to do that? I see Joyce going, yes. <laughs> all right. I like that too, actually. All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to mute you all, guys. And wait, 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 wait. When you're looking at the property, I meant when you're looking at the property in particular, and mm -hmm. you want to see where it is on the map. Ah. That map, can you zoom out to see where that house is in relationship to? You can't because it is a PDF. And because it's a PDF, you cannot do it. But anyway, I had a lot of notes for the map, so we're going to do, a, we're going to do the map thing. So I'm gonna go back to share screen and MLS Advantage, share and super quick, I am going to do, I'm gonna play with the map a little bit. So instead of field search, I am going to pick map search. And a map search, well, let's say that I want a single family home, I want it active, I want a um, maximum price of, um, mm, now I'm looking for a bargain because I'm about to retire in my dreams. Um, and I want a minimum bed, minimum three bedrooms, minimum three bathrooms for 350,000 bucks. Justin, are you nuts? Ah, well, the thing is that I want to, on the map, I'm going to look for a place that I know is beautiful, but um, maybe affordable, right? So let's see where, Look at the Palm Bay. So I'm going to do a circle on the Palm Beach area. So right here, circle, let go. And now let's look at my, uh, uh, my results. 82 single family homes for less than $375,000 and three bedrooms or more in Palm Bay. Now the map, 
What can I do with the map? Okay, if you see the green icon being pointing, that is one single property. But if you see a blue bubble with a lot of numbers on it, that is a cluster of properties. So if you want to see those properties in detail, you have to zoom in with the map. You can zoom in in two different ways. One, you can use the zoom in, zoom out tool right here on the map, click on it. Or if you want to impress your family and friends, you hold the control key on your keyboard and use the wheel on your mouse, the wheel on your mouse. And that's what I'm doing right now because I want to impress my family and friends. And now those clusters become individual properties. Now, do I want to see the details on these properties? Well, yeah, of course, I'm using them up for a reason, right? Okay, so I like this one. It's right next door, actually across the street from Turkey Creek Sanctuary. I happen to know the place. It is awesome. So I'm gonna click on this. Just click once and look at that. You see a whole bunch of information about the property on a little square and also I can just right now add it to my report. Right now, I wanna see the reports. Well, I can click on that and I can see the reports in detail. I wanna see the listing details. Sure, no problem. And I scroll to the bottom and there you go. Look at that. I have the information for the broker, which is something that I really like. I wanna go back to my search. Yeah, absolutely. Back to results. And back to the map. Uh, what do you guys think? Pretty cool, right? You guys are good. We still have 31 people. Wow. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks, you for Justin. Thank you. Justin, I have a quick question for you. Sure. Um, when I went in to play around, I looked at my profile, mm -hmm. and it's got old company information in it. Don't know, and it's I don't know how to change it. Some things you can change yourself. Some things you have to change on the Florida Realtors uh, profile. And some things you're going to have to contact Stacy Benedict to change okay. for you. So what you can change yourself, I'm sure that you saw it right there, right? Okay. Just, did you see the things that you can change yourself? Yeah, yeah. very limited. Yeah. yeah. Then and it wouldn't let me upload a photo. Go to Florida Realtors, <laughs> log in, and look for your profile on Florida Realtors. Okay. Jay's Joyce is back. And if you have the wrong information on Florida Realtors, you cannot change. It has to be uh, the company level. So if it was for an agent, contact your broker. And if it is for a broker like we are, then you need to contact Stacy, and Stacy can fix that on Florida Realtors. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Justin. Yes. So MLS Advantage is taking the profile from Florida Realtors, right? Whatever, whatever profile Florida Realtors has, MLS Advantage has that. Yes, you have very limited ability to change a lot of things on MLS Advantage. You can change, I believe, your preferred phone number. You can opt in or out of displaying your company, your, your branch address on the report, and a couple of other little things. But the bulk of information comes from Florida. And my understanding is this is national. So if I wanted to find a property in Connecticut, I could go into this MLS Advantage and... and no, MLS Advantage is only for the state of Florida. Oh, it is. The one that is national is RPR, but that is tricky because RPR has a limit of MLS information with tax data. Good note, I do have, uh, I think, two different webinars on uh, RPR next month. Good, RPR, we'd love to see that. that um, well, thank you very much, guys, for participating. Thank you very much for the 31 here who stayed a little bit longer, putting up with me. And uh, I will be sending you all the schedule for May. And I hope to see you next month in the next webinar. Bye, guys. Thank you so much, Justin. Great information. Thank you, Justin.